Welcome back to the only live Money for Fire Lacrosse talk show on the planet. This is Daily Dive. I'm your host, Michael Carbellis, per usual, as always. By the way, this awesome show has awesome merchandise like this mug next to me. Head over to dailydivelax.creator-spring.com or hear me, hear me out. Um, head over to the link tree in our bios and click Daily Dive Store. Much easier to do so. But when you do so, it's one of the best ways to support the show, one of the easiest ways, one of the most affordable ways to just buy some merch, man. Support the brand of Talking Lacrosse every day like you know you think it should be. Whether you like me or not, the brand is here to stay. We thank you for that. We got more than just mugs, by the way, but the mug is nice. The mug is very nice. Well, folks, I am very excited to get to a summit that's been long in the in the back burner, if you will. It's time for an NOL midseason report cards for all 15 teams with Mr. Carvelis and Professor Levy. Now, on these graphics, you will see I have graded the offense, the defense, and the goaltending. Again, defense and goaltending are separate. I will have an overall grade based on the averages of those. Adam Levy has provided extra credit in three sentences or less for every single team in the National Lacrosse League, providing stats one way he knows how. Now, the extra credit does not contribute to the final grade. It is just Adam Levy trying to give some positivity as it goes along. There are 15 teams in this league, and we have no students left behind. First one. The Colorado Mammoth. I will go through all these just so I can tell you what's going on here on social media. They'll be, they'll be posted in full later. For the offense, I gave it a C plus. Defense B and a goaltending C. Offense C plus because disappointed with the way Connor Kelly has not gelled with the offense. I'm sorry. Defense got a B because as in years past, they have kept the team in the games. A bit off and on, though. So, eh. And the goaltending, Dylan Ward has been benched like twice already. Not a good thing. The extra credit from Adam Levy, Robert Hope leads the team in loose balls, cost turnovers, and block shots. No one in the NLL has combined for more cost turnovers and block shots this season. Robert Hope, you are our only hope, or one of the only hopes in Colorado. Next up, the Firewolves have received a B plus. Now, obviously, the biggest thing for me on this is the, I give the offense an A minus. Rookies have led the charge, but I told you guys yesterday, Albany's preseason expectations, when they started showing out, those two games they lost, I felt like kind of put a damper on things, people's expectations. I'm like, okay, we're just who the, they're who we thought they were. Let's be real. They're still playing very well. Offense probably got a low grade for me, but you get it. And they're the only team that's beaten the Bants and the Thunderbirds this season, according to Professor Levy's extra credits. The Buffalo Bears can a B overall. How about Ian McKay, the Swiss Army Knight of the Buffalo Bandits? In nine games, according to Adam Levy, and I did verify this, Ian McKay has already taken a career high 203 face-offs. Now, the success rate, that's another story. But that's on top of all the other ways this dude fills the stat sheet. That's a great line from Adam Levy, but a B for the Bandits. That is, was not on purpose, I promise you. B's across the board, actually. Thunderbird's also going to be um, Aaron Woods. I mentioned him in the offensive where I gave an A-. minus. Um, Adam Levy says he's recorded six goals and nine assists just three games into his career. He made a strong boost to their offense. And, and I'm an idiot because he now has played – let me make sure I get this right. He played in four games. He's got eight goals and ten assists. That is the one stat. I'm an idiot. I will update that before we post it online. That is my fault. I updated everything else to make sure that was on me. That is not on Adam Levy. Okay. The Saskatchewan Rush. Roll the highlight reel. Um, I gave the Rush a B minus. Now, this, I've been saying the more consistent schedules are a thing. Adam Levy's extra credits is this. Over a 42-day period from late to early April, fools, the Rush played 10 games. And they're at 3-4, and four, so their year is far from over. So this B-minus could look a little bit more promising, and that's still a passing grade in this class. If you're in a B-minus or higher, you're still amazing. If you're in a C, to me, 
that's not passing. I'm sorry. At least in the school of um, Dilly Dive. Let's let's never have. What if we did build a school like LeBron James did? I'm just saying. We're not going to do that. Philadelphia Wings get a C plus. Um, I mentioned only on the show the defense gets a C minus for me. Forcing your goalie to make 50 plus saves to have a chance at winning is not good. I'm also Sam LeClaire gets a nice little credit there. He had 17 points in 17 games last season. Already has 16 points in just seven games this year. Not bad from Professor Olivia. Thank you, sir. Um, the dogs get a big fat C. This could be worse if there were any expectations for this team. Unfortunately, there is not. I have said this before. The, the offense gives a C minus because this is the worst offense possible unless Jack Hanna scores. Jack Hanna probably gave them a, a passing grade in most schools. As I said, in this school, it's not passing, but I'm just saying. Next up, the New York Riptide get a B. And to be fair, let's not forget the first four or five weeks where they weren't, where they were still the same old Riptide. So that's why this letter is why it is for the um, Buffalo, for the Buffalo Bands, for the New York Riptide. And of course, Callum Jones has been the amazing storyline. He's one of four players and the only rookie in the National Cross League with 10 cost turnovers and 10 block shots. The dude is disgusting. Blah, emoji. That's a new thing kids are doing. I don't know why. That's why I'm a teacher and I'm not a kid anymore. All right, Rochester Nighthawks lineup. Come here, sir. Here is your grade. You get a B minus. Um, I think Raleigh Hutchcraft started um well in emergency relief, but has gotten worse with more reps. And I still think their defense, they would be undefeated if they had a pulse on defense, but they get a B minus. Their A, their offense has been great. It's been great. They played the advance very well twice. That included in Bandit Land. The Georgia Swarm are having lunch looking at their report cards saying, huh? No way. They get a B. Um, all I see here, the C plus from um from Brett Dobson. Is he having a sophomore slump? Like, what is going on? I've noticed that Warren Hill. Let's a side note here. So Warren Hill won the man cup, has not played well. Brett Dobson. Wins the PLL Championship, has not played the greatest. I'm almost wondering if the offseason stuff is not helping. And I've heard that there's like a, a controversy whether or not it changes your play or not. Um, mm, Just saying. But back to your report card, there you go, B for the Georgia Swarm. Adam Levy with a great stat here. Lyle Thompson and Andrew Q, who has two game winners, by, by the way, are the only duo in the NLL. They each have 50-plus points and 50-plus loose balls. Dane Smith and Josh Byrne could never. I'm kidding. Um, Panther City gets a B-. minus. I do think – I okay, so people are going to say a B- minus for the for the um, Panther City, aside from the Las Vegas game, they haven't been as – they're so potent on offense if you look at that roster, and I have not seen a lot of it besides the Dogs game. So, just saying. Um they won more games on the road than at home. That is wild. But that did not contribute to the grade. But Adam Levy loves people, and he loves being positive. All right, we're almost done here. Toronto Rock, one of the few teams to get an A on their um, on their lessons here. Check this out. Corey Small is in his – I'm an idiot. Corey Small is in his 13th NLL season. I'm going to go back to this. There you go. Fantasy, I got a B minus. Um, by the way, the Toronto Rock, Corey Small is in his 13th National Cross League season. And he's already he's on pace for a career high in goals. Um, Father Time, middle fingers, bad boy. I, I mean, I'm just saying. B minus for the Calgary Roughnecks. I don't know what the H E double lacrosse sticks happened to their defense, but it is not good. Del Bianco is still being amazing, though. That doesn't make any sense to me. Um, he's been in, like, there's a very few head-scratching things where you say, well, I will John Abbott unpack Reguar. Well, John Abbott, I think he wants that one back. Very few times have we heard that this year. It's, it's been all on the defense. All right, also sliding down the slide. They're like, while they're riding down at recess, they're like, I got a B plus. The Seals are in shambles. <laughs> um... So, 
Chris Reglieri is the big one that stands out here. He's a 21-year-old playing like he's a 31-year-old in his prime. It does not make any sense. He has the second highest goals against average or the second best goals against average. Oh, that's why he gets an A. And for the offense, you're like, a B? Well, Austin starts is great, but somehow the offense gets like stuck in neutral. They have those diarrhea runs I've said about the Riptide and the Swarm. Sorry. The Warriors are sliding down the slide now, probably just bumped their head or fell off the slide because they're like, a C, and they just, it's, I'm having fun at school here. Um, Aaron, my, this is mean of me. I said Aaron Bold is his own worst critic. Good. Good. Brayden Lady and Owen Grant have the um, most combined loose balls this season. Congrats. And that's the, there you go. That That's the report cards. I like them. I, I hope you guys agree with most of them. And if you don't, that's why I'm also here because conversation is wonderful. I like to talk. Hopefully you do too. These will be posted on social media later on, probably like in a two part or three part thing. We'll figure that out. I assume there's 15 teams, which I'm not mad at. But yeah, there's our midseason report cards. Per, thank you to Professor Levy for giving us these stats last week that I then updated for him and confirmed. It, obviously, the Aaron Woods thing, that was completely on me. I checked that and did not check it hard enough. But every other stat was on point. I promise you that. So thank you to Professor Levy. You can now go back to teaching your classroom, which I'm sure has a bunch of numbers and, and math nerds. Boo! We're in the fun class of talking sports. 